namaskar everybody welcome let us start with a prayer this is a very well known famous hymn prayer this is called the mrityunjaya mantra also called maha mrityunjaya mantra mrityunjaya means conquering death mrityunjaya so this mantra is chanted is a vedic mantra from the yajurveda shukla yajurveda very powerful to restore health both mental and physical and for a spiritual understanding enlightenment so it's on page 56 of universal prayers the universal prayers top of page 56 <clears throat> ्यंबकंजामे सुगंधि पुष्टिवर्धन उर्वाकमिव बंदना मृत्योर्मुक्षीयृताशिप यू ओ स्वीट लॉर्ड ऑफ ट्रांसेंडेंटल विजन O giver of prosperity to all, may I be free from the bonds of death, like a ripe fruit dropping from the tree. May I never again forget my immortal nature. O peace, may there be peace in our hearts. May there be peace and harmony amongst all beings. May there be peace everywhere in nature. Chanted very often. daily by some prayer by some people and it is uh, restore health bring good health peace and joy so very important vedic mantra om triambakam yajamahe sugandhim pushti vardhanam urvarakam vabandhanan mrityor mukshiyam amritat so let us continue now the last two topics are remaining in chapter 17 one topic is three kinds of dhanam we have seen so far three kinds of uh, tapas austerities austerities of the body speech and mind shariram tapah how to keep the body in good condition and speech austerities wang mayam tapah your speech must be truthful soothing and useful and timely and then third one manasam tapah mind always are bring only pleasant peaceful pure thoughts in our mind and observing silence all those things we have seen then we saw a three kinds of tapas sattvic tapas rajasic tapas and tamasic tapas three kinds of yajna also we have seen yajna dana yajna dana tapas now we go to three kinds of danam danam means charity in three verses 20 21 22 agwan shri krishna is going to explain three kinds of charity sattvic rajasic and tamasic danam so let us do shloka number 20 दातव्यमितुपकारिणे देशे काले च पात्रे चन सात्क स्मृत सात्क दान चारिटी वै वी शुड गिव दान विल अंडरस्टैंड लेट सी वॉट इज सात्क दान दट दान चारिटी विच इज डन with the noble intention that dana is essential for spiritual life not only spiritual life even for worldly life danam or sharing is essential part of existence dana charity is done not only by people charity is being done by whole of nature you can observe everything in nature is giving us giving sharing giving animals are giving sharing whatever they can 
trees or plants are sharing most important thing they are giving us oxygen sust sustain our life and sun is sharing giving us energy to sustain human life animal life plant life on this planet moon is giving nutrition to the plants by reflecting blazing sunlight and converting into soothing cool moonlight everything in nature is giving oceans are giving water to us and the water in the ocean is evaporating by the heat of the sun becoming clouds and clouds are pouring water back to the earth so plants can grow people can have water so in, if you observe everything is giving every animal is contributing something to the whole ecosystem to balance life all forms of life on this planet everything is giving so people have to give is essential part we cannot giving we cannot live if you only give if you only take what we want from nature and if you don't give anything then uh, we are not doing the right thing in the third chapter bhagwan sri krishna explain tair dattan apraada yebhyo yo bhante stena eva sah by the gods and by divinity in all everything is being given to us and you are receiving so many things from nature from other people from animals and plants everything we, we have comes from, with the help of other people our body is sustained maintained by the, with, with the help of thousands of people animals and plants so we have to acknowledge what we receive and also in turn we have to contribute what we can to the rest of nature if we don't do that one will be stealing that's what this shloka says there the tan apradaya without giving whatever we have received given by the gods yo bhunte a person who eats means takes receiving everything sahas tena eva tena means a thief so giving is an 3 chapter 3 seal the source number 12 or some or 11 or 12 there the tan apradaya bhyo yo bhunte then a which one right. chapter 3 uh, shloka 12 yeah. so is giving is an essential part of life without giving we cannot exist we should not be very selfish i will not give anything you will only receive everything that will not work so dana everybody has to dana whatever we can to not have to be always uh, in terms of money anything even a few kind words to a person in distress is kind of dana <clears throat> giving something in cash or kind service service more important money can be given people who are rich rich money, rich people they can write large checks but better than that is rendering service to the needy people poor people sick people people in distress to animals and to plants rendering service in actual service in any way we can that is very important so we are going to study three kinds of dana so satvik dana means datavyam this dana has to be done with this intention danam adiyate that dana which is given to whom anupakarine upakara means favor returning some favor if i do something good to somebody if they return another favor to me that's pratyapakara so we should return what we receive or something if we don't if somebody does not return then we are not doing their part so dana has to be given to those from whom we cannot expect anything in return why because if you give money to a rich person then he can give me same amount of money or more money there's not nothing great about it but if you give food to a poor hungry person that is better you are fulfilling a need of a needy person if you give comfort solace and medical help to somebody who is sick that dana is much better so we should not expect anything in return for our dana if you expect something in return then that becomes rajasik dana satvik dana means i am offering this to you in return for everything i have received in life from so many sources so this is my humble contribution only 
giving, not expecting anything in return. If you gave a gift to somebody, you should not expect that person will give me equal amount of gift. There should not, expectation should not be there. Diyate anupakarine. Three things are important in dana. <clears throat> when you do charity, three things have to be kept in mind. What are they? Deshe kale cha patre cha. Desha kala patra. Desha means, Desha means a country, Desha also means a space or a place or environment. Desha, Deshe punye kurukshetra, Kurukshetra Dau, in a holy place, it says. In a good place, dana has to be given. There is a proper place where dana has to be given. Preferably, when not many people are watching, not for publicity, not to seek publicity and rewards. What we give should not be publicized. What the right hand gives, the left hand need not know. Not uh, simply publicizing how much money I have given, how much service I have done, it is it will become a rajasic, tamasic dana. So, they say in the proper place, call it at the proper time. When a person is hungry, you give food. When a person does not have clothing to wear, you give clothing. At the proper time, when you give that person can actually use. That is useful gift. Satik dara. The timing must be proper. Kala. Isha kala cha patra cha. Patra means the recipient. Patra in general means any container, any recipient, like a pot. Patra here means recipient, one who receives our dana with the proper attitude, with love, with gratitude, not expecting anything in return. Swami just says, Swami Yekanda says in the Karma Yoga lecture, is a, there are eight lectures in the Karma Yoga book. One of them is called, We Help Ourselves, Not the World. Title of one of his uh, uh, lectures. There Swamiji says, when you give dana, do not stand on a pedestal at a higher level with five cents in your hand and say, hey, poor man, here I'm giving you five cents for your use. Not like that. Improper attitude with humility we have to give. We should not expect any thanks or reward or return from the recipient. On the other hand, we should be grateful to the person who is giving us a chance to do charity. The giver should be grateful. We should not expect somebody if you give something we should not expect them to give thank you cards, send you a thank you notice, all those things. That expectation should not be there. That is Satvik Dana. Deshe Kalecha Patra with the proper recipient. When a person has already a million dollars, if you give him ten dollars, it does not mean anything. If a beggar has no money to buy food, if you give him two dollars, it means a lot. So the recipient must be the proper recipient, fit recipient. Deshe kale cha patre cha taddhavanam satyakam smritam. That is satvik dana. And then rajasik dana is opposite of this one. Stroka number 21. Yat pratyatakar artham palamuddhishya vapunaha diyate cha pariklishtam Taddhanam Rajasam Smritam. Rajasik Dana is being described in 21. Pratyapakara Artham. Pratyapakara means return favor. I do something for somebody and expect that person to return in some way what I have given. That should not be there. Then it becomes Rajasik Dana. Without expecting anything in return. Not even praise or publicity or thank you or anything. In private, without seeking publicity reward, we should give dana with humility, love, mm -hmm. and gratitude. Respect mm -hmm. yes, oh. Pratyapakara artham phalam uddishya. Re, 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 request or expecting some result. Phalam means result. I have given this dana, something must come to me in return. That should not be there. Diyatecha parikleshtam. Parikleshtam means here, Shankara says, Keda Samyuktam, made very gratefully. That means, um, with um, unwillingly, 
um, I'm required to get this donation. I don't like, but uh, somehow if I don't give, then there'll be bad publicity. So without wholeheartedly, if you give dana, that make, means rajasik dana. When you give something big or small, it should be given wholeheartedly, not disdainfully, not reluctantly, not like that, willingly, joyfully, with love we have to give. Even if it's a small thing that we give. Then, sloka number 22, but one is going to say what is tamasik dana. The worst kind of dana is tamasik dana. Here it says, Adeshakale yadhanam apatre vyascha diyate asat kritamavagnyatam Tattamasamudahritam Deshakala patra all improper in tamasik dana. Adeshakale Apatre byasta yadiyat. Apatra means improper recipient. A person who is known to uh, be a drug addict, if you give him money, he will use it to buy drugs. Improper patra, recipient is not good. So we should not uh, give dana to such a person. Then we are encouraging him to do bad things. And, uh, apatra. Apatra means improper recipient. The recipient should be proper, one who is in need of something, and we should give something which that person can actually use. If you give a, a hungry person a new shirt, what will he do? He wants food for the stomach. So what is required, timely, that kind of dana we have to do. Adesha Kali, at the improper place environment, a kala means time is not proper, timing is, timing is not proper, a recipient is not proper. This kind of dana is tamasic dana. Asatkritam. Asatkritam means, uh, asatkritam, priyavachana pada prakshalana pujadi rahitam dana. Properly with the proper attitude, we have to give dana. Asatkritam means, here Shankara says, <coughs> priyavachana means with smooth, Pleasing words we have to give dana. <clears throat> when you give something to somebody, we should talk nicely with the proper attitude we have to give. Priyavachana means sweet words you have to say to the recipient. Hmm. Then Priyavachana, Pada Prakshalana, we have to wash the feet of the recipient. What does washing the feet mean? See, in uh, uh, earlier days, ancient days, People used to travel only by walking, mostly. There were no there were no airplanes and cars. They used to go from place to place, mostly by walking or in bullock carts. So when a person walks, that person comes to your house, then we have to wash that person's feet. That was the custom in earlier days. Now those things have changed, but earlier that was the custom. When a person just came, we have to wash his feet. Father Prakshalan. That means Offer something nice, treat that person nicely, make that person feel welcome. Priyavachanam, Pada Prakshalanam, Puja Adirahitam. Puja means actually we should worship the, the guest. Guest is God Himself coming in human form. That we know from the Taitiri Upanishad, Athiti Deva Bhava, it says. The Taitiri Upanishad, many instructions are given to the departing student in a Gurukulam. <coughs> Forest uh, Hermitage School. This was one of the instructions. First is, Matra Deva Bhava, treat your mother as God. God himself has come in the form of our mother to give us birth, nourish us and bring us up. Mother should be treated as God, Divine Mother herself is our mother. Swamiji also says this in his lecture, in Inspired Talks. Pitra Deva Bhava, same thing about father. Mother, father, God come in human form. Then third thing is Acharya Deva Bhava. Teacher is none other than is none other than God Himself come in the form of human being to teach us. Fourth one is Atiti Deva Bhava. Atiti means a guest who comes without previous appointment. Tithi means date. <clears throat> Nowadays people call before, send email and confirm that you can go at the right time. Those things are not 
possible earlier days. People just come and they know, then you know they have come. They have no way to communicate beforehand. So a person comes without expectation, such a person is the Atiti, then you have to treat such a person as if God himself has come in the form of that guest. So all these things have to be kept in. That means, in general, we have to treat the recipient with love and respect. As if God himself has come there in the form of the recipient, recipient patra to give me a chance to offer this something so I can practice unselfishness. When we do dana, we have to keep two things in mind. Why are we giving? Why should we give anything to anybody? We have to give because we receive. Everything we have, including the body, clothes I'm wearing, food I'm eating, air I'm breathing, is all made possible by nature and other beings. I did not bring anything with me when I came. Everything was given to me by other people. Everything I have now is given to me by other people. So I should give something in return. Everything I'm receiving, every moment I'm receiving uh, from the trees, oxygen, what do you do in return for the trees? Take care of them nicely, not necessarily kill trees and destroy the forest. You should treat plants, trees, as they are living beings. They also have feelings. Some studies have shown that plants also have feelings. We should treat them nicely as if they were living, as they are living beings, not as if they are living beings. Same thing about all nature, other animals and plants. So, dana should be given with love and not disdainfully. So, one thing to keep in mind is whatever we give, we should give with love. Giving means expression of love, one thing. I gave the example earlier. Somebody comes to your house, you give a cup of tea, what do you give? Not to fulfill the person's need. That person can have tea in, a, in his or her own home. But by giving a cup of tea, what we are doing is we are expressing our love and joy. Great honor that you have chosen to come to my place and welcome and little cup of tea to show respect and love. Expression of love. Giving means expression of love. Same thing when you offer a food to uh, uh, divinity, God, and when you do worship, when you, do, when, when you worship, we offer food, among other things. Why should we offer food to God? Does he need any our food? Does he need our almonds and bananas and, uh, and rice? In? No, he is the Lord of the whole universe. They are giving means not to fulfill his needs, but to express our love and devotion to God. One thing, giving means expression of love and devotion. Second thing is, Giving means becoming unselfish, practicing non-attachment. This thing, what I, whatever I am giving, so long it was, I thought it was in my position. I was this food or whatever you are giving money was mine, or I thought it they were mine. Now I am giving it to somebody. It no longer mine. Namama, nirmamo bhutva. Bhagwan Sri Krishna says earlier, practicing detachment. Once something is given to somebody then we should not even think about it. No longer, it was never mine in the first place. But if I thought it was mine, that idea of mine also has been given away, given up. Nothing was mine, nothing is mine. Everything belongs to the Lord. If you take uh, water from the tank, it's like pouring the water back to the tank. If you pour water to the tank, from where did we get the water? From the tank in the first place. Tank or lake or any uh, ocean or river or anything. Giving back giving back to nature what we received from nature. Whatever you give to somebody is giving back. Actually, I had received it from the whole of nature. Nothing was really mine. So, practice of detachment is essential part of giving dana. When you give something to somebody, when you see the person next time, you should not ask the person, I gave you that one, what did you do with it? No, should not remind the person. We should not, I should not think about what I gave. Once it is given, you should forget about it. So that is the essence of dana. Expression of love, gratitude, and practice of non-attachment, or practice of detachment. Those things have to be kept in mind when we do dana. Now, before we leave the topic of Dhanam, I want to read a passage from the Upanishads. Pantiri Upanishad talks about Dhanam 
nicely. And actually, I'm reading from Swami Rangana Tanandaji's Gita, three volume Gita. But there it is nicely explained from the Taittiriya Upanishad. There the teacher says, in the Upanishad, teacher says to the student, when you give dana, how to, how to give dana? He says, Sraddhaya Deyam. Sadha means earnestness and faith uh, with good feeling and unselfishness. Sadha. Hmm. So this whole chapter is called Sadha Trivibhaga Yoga. When you give something to somebody, you should give it with earnestness, not half-heartedly. Hmm. Ashraddhaya Adeyam. Without, without Sadha, we should not give. Then he says, <coughs> Sri Adeyam. Sri means wealth. Sri means Lakshmi, wealth. So what we give must be in proportion to what we have. If a person is uh, making $250,000 a year salary, and uh, if he gives only $1 to you know, some organization for charity, that is not proportionate. We can give more. So in proportion to what we have, we have to give charity. Sriya Deyam. Then next one is Bhiya Deyam. Bhi means bhaya, fear. Why we should be afraid? Fear here means not fear of that kind which you are familiar. Fear here means we should be afraid that whatever I am giving may, be, may not be enough for the person, may not be the right type of gift I am giving. Some kind of hesitation, fear. Not with overconfidence. Oh, I'm giving this, this will finish it. This will uh, meet all the requirements that are given enough. Not like that one. Hoping that it will be sufficient and proper for. Hoping that it will be what I've given will be proper and sufficient and timely for the recipient. Riya deyam. Riya deyam. Riya means with humility. Not with arrogance. We should not say, I have all this money, I'm giving some donation. Not like that. With humility, we have to give. Not with pride. I have so much money I can give to this poor man. Not like that one. We should not stand in a pedestal and say, I'm giving this money to the poor person. Not like that. With humility, we have to give. Hriya deyam with humility. Then samvida deyam. Samvit means knowledge. Knowledge here means give with the knowledge of the purpose for which the gift is being made. You appreciate the project and then give the project. We should know that the gift you are giving, dana we are giving, is appropriate, useful and timely for the recipient. Knowing that, we have to give. Not at random something, you don't want to get rid of something. It is laying in your closet for a long time, so let me give it a charity and claim tax deduction from that one, <laughs> not like that one. Hmm. Something that we give must be useful, timely, appropriate for the recipient. <clears throat> so, Dhanam. Then other instructions are there. Satyam Mada Dharmam Chara Swadhyaya Anma Pramada. Teacher gives instruction in the Upanishad to the student. Satyam Mada. First instruction always follow truthfulness. Never deviate from the truth. Dharmam Chara. Always practice Dharma. That means righteousness. Dharma is the basis of life, not only human life, all, all living things. Basis of the uh, existence, dharma. Dhrutarane, to uphold, to, sub, to support, that is dharma. So if we protect dharma, dharma will protect us. If we abandon dharma, then we'll not, it's not good for us. Dharma, rakshati, rakshitaha. This whole essence of Mahabharata instruction. Mahabharata is such a great epic, very great epic. So many stories, so much, so many events there. But if you want to summarize the teaching of Mahabharata, more than 100,000 100, verses, these three words, four words are necessary. Three words, Dharma, Rakshati, 
rakshita if we protect dharma if we follow dharma virtuousness in all our actions then dharmo rakshati rakshita rakshati it will protect us if we abandon dharma do anything we like in adharmic ways in unrighteous ways if we do things and live our life then we are sure to encounter ruin and suffering so dana comes in that category hmm? should be done properly desha kala patra three things proper timing proper place environment and proper recipient with humility so we'll leave the topic of dana here then tarajasam uh, smritam that we did adesha kale 22 we did now the last topic of this chapter very important topic now om tat sat we see when we say some prayer at the beginning or end of a, uh, any work activity like puja or study or anything we say om tat sat why we should say om tat sat what is the significance of that just being explained in the remaining shlokas of this chapter <coughs> five six shlokas <coughs> Number twenty-three, Shloka twenty-three. Om Tat Saditi Nirdesha Brahmanas Trividas Murta Brahmanas Tena Vedas Ta Yajnas Ta Vita Pura. Om Tat Saditi. Om Tat Sad. Three words. Iti thus. Nirdesha. Nirdesha means. description or specification what is being specified or described brahmana of brahman supreme reality supreme reality brahman can be three epithets are used to describe brahman om tat sat all the three describe brahman trividaha nirdesha three three fold description of brahman mahapura in ancient times last word pura in the second line smrtaha it has been mentioned description of brahman three fold description of brahman om tat sat it has been described by the creator himself at the time of creation while creating whole of creation especially brahmana veda yajna vihita these things are highlighted actually everything divinity in everything should be seen everything is divine sarvam kalavidam brahma upanishad says whole universe nothing nothing but brahman itself but we have to bhagwan highlight certain things specifically in chapter 10 we have seen that one how to see the presence of god in all and everything so here three things are highlighted showcased brahmana vedah yajna yajna means we have studied yajna in the third chapter and also in this chapter any action that is done as an offering as yajna the instruction given to us earlier in the gita in chapter 3 shloka number 9 bhagwan says any action you do must be done as an offering yajna every step we take every word we speak every morsel of food we eat All to be done as offering is yajna. So that we have studied in detail in chapter three and also in this and also fifteen chapter also we study. So here, when the creation was brought into existence, the Lord at the same time brought into existence, built into the creation the concept of yajna. Yajna means giving. Without giving, there is no existence possible because we said earlier. plants are giving to around the clock they are giving danam they are doing yajna they are not aware of that one but they are doing animals are giving all the time people have to give also that we have seen essence the essential part dana plays in human life we have seen before without giving if you only receive then you are being like thieves chapter 3 shloka 12 we have seen before so dana is important part of life of existence so in that dana we have to see the divinity presence of divinity that is dana yajna dana yajna veda yajna yajna in yajna then veda veda means the scriptures which contain instruction about life which contain the nature of divinity presence of divinity and the purpose of human life 
and how to achieve it. All these things are in the Vedas. So they are the sacred scriptures and sacred scriptures have to be worshipped, studied and the instructions given therein must be put into daily practice. Veda. Veda Yajna. Then Brahmana. Brahmana means not necessarily a person who is born in a Brahmana family. That does not automatically make a person a Brahmana. As you have seen before, Brahmana is one who has received, achieved self-knowledge, Brahma Jnana. Only Brahma Jnani can be called a Brahmana actually. Uh, very rare. So that was defined in the, um, this came earlier also in one of the classes. Who is a Brahmana? He described in different ways, in different scriptures. One description given in the Buradharanek Upanishad is very, very uh, nice, hmm? telling. And that is, description was given by the famous sage, Yagni Valkya, to the another famous woman saint, Gargi. In those days, women were also great saints like men. There was no distinction between men and women in regard to self-knowledge. Hmm? There may be distinction at the social level, hmm? at the society level. These are changing rules. The rules change, rules about social behavior changes from time to time. What is appropriate in one society is not appropriate in another society. Changes with time. But the rule about Brahma Jnana, spiritual life, or spiritual life, there is no distinction at all. No distinction between men and women in the to spiritual life. Social life, there may be some conventions and expectations. They may be different in different places at different times. But in Vedanta, absolutely no difference. So Gargi, Maitri, all those were famous women saints in that time. Brahma Vahadinis. So to her, Gargi, a famous saint, Yajni Malka says, who is a Brahmana during their conversation in the Brahadaranyaka Upanishad. So this is what Yajni Malka says. He says, Yova etadaksharam Gargi <coughs> aviditva Asma lokat praiti sakrapanaha. First, he says he is not a Brahmana. Who cannot be a Brahmana? He may be born a Brahmana family, but cannot be a Brahmana unless he has achieved Brahma jnana, the self knowledge, that means realization. Otherwise, simply spending the whole life in worldly entanglements and preoccupations does not make a person a Brahmana. Etad aksharam, aksharam means. Supreme Reality Brahman, Aksharam Brahma Paramam, we saw in chapter 8, first sloka number 3. Aksharam is Supreme Reality Brahman, Imperishable Brahman. Aksharam Aviditva, without knowing, without experiencing our divine nature, Yaha, such a person who, Asmar Lokat Praiti, departs from this world, that means dies, spends the whole lifetime in worldly pursuits, does not achieve self knowledge. Or pure devotion, devotees can substitute that one. Such a person is Kripanaha. Kripana means a wretched person. We study the whole life. Most precious gift that we can give, that you, that you can get from God, is human birth. We have seen that before. If we don't use it for the purpose for which it was given, then we are squandering away the most precious gift. Such a person who, who dies, spends the whole lifetime, Without receiving, reaching self knowledge, achieving, attaining self knowledge, is a Kripana wretched person. But a Brahmana is one who experiences self knowledge before leaving the body, before death. Yova etadaksharam gargi viditva asma lokat praiti sa Brahmana O gargi, a person who achieves self knowledge. Before leaving the body, such a person is a Brahmana. So when we see such a person, we have to remember, remember, remind ourselves, God himself is in that person, coming in that form of human. Everybody, in fact, in general, but in them, God's presence is highlighted. You can easily see. You have to see God's presence in everything. There's a faraway goal. But in certain things, we can see God's presence clearly, vividly. Brahmana, Veda, Yajna. These three things were created. And the, and the ancient time, the time of creation, Om Tat Saditi, by, saying, by rem, remaining divine presence in them, described in three ways. Om Tat Sat. 
So we see the meaning of each of these three uh, shabdas, words, terms, separately in the remaining verses. So we go to sloka number 24. Om is being described. It came in the eighth chapter also. Jasmat omityuda hritya yajnadana tapakriya pravartante vidhanokta satatam brahma vadinam. Therefore, <clears throat> always those who maintain the doctrine of Brahman, Brahma vadin, Brahma vadini, Brahma vadin means those people who believe in the Vedas, in the existence of God, divinity in all such people, they maintain that the doctrine of, that they commence ordained rites like sacrifice, yajna, self-giving, gift, dana, and then step us after uttering the syllables Om. Om has to be chanted before you do any work. Especially Yajna Dana Tapas. Study. Tap, study is a kind of tapas. Sodhya is a kind of tapas. Austerity we have to do. In general, any action, such as eating or going someplace, beginning some action, we should start that activity by chanting Om. That means reminding ourselves that in the activity which I am going to start now, whatever it be, we say, you see the divinity in that activity. It is yajna. I do it as worship. Whatever activity I am going to do is actually worship of the divine. Divine is present in that one. We have to remind ourselves of the divine presence and remind ourselves also to do everything as worship of the divine. So Om reminds us. Om is a sound symbol for divinity, for God with and without form. Nirguna, Nirakara, formless, attributeless Brahman also denoted by Om, or Saguna Sakara, that means God with form, with attributes, all the divinities we worship, Rama, Krishna, Buddha, Jesus, etc., all of them are indicated by the one symbol Om, comes in the Vedas. So the instruction here in 24 is, whenever you begin any action, we should start the action by uttering a syllable Om. You see, some people do that one. That is one instruction. Then, the meaning of the remaining two terms are given here. In 25, Tat is being described. Om Tat. Taditi anabhisandhaya phalam yajnatapa kriyaha dana kriyasa vivida kriyante moksha kaangshibhihi See the word phalam Anabhisandhaya. Palam abhisandhaya means expecting fruits result of our action. Anabhisandhaya means not expecting selfish benefit from the action that we are going to do. We should not ask ourselves what is in it for me before I doing some work. We should say, how can this work be useful to all and everything? Keeping or doing all activities in the largest possible framework, reference. Not just for me, not in the personal context alone, largest possible context. Anything that we do should be useful not only to me, but to all and everybody and everything else, to all of nature if possible. Any action that we do should benefit all and others, nature also. Should not be harmful to any entity, anything that I do. So, that means, that is a designation of Brahman. That means that. Why Brahman is called that? Because the pronoun tat is used to indicate something, a faraway object. Tat means that. Tat purusha, saha purusha, that man there. And opposed to that, something nearby object is called idam. Idam means this, this place, in this place, nearby place. In the Vedantic context, when you use tat, we refer it, use it to refer to Brahman. Brahman appears to be far away. Actually, it is opposite. There is nothing closer to us than Brahman. It's our very self. But we are not perceiving that. We are seeing, we believe God is somewhere in the heaven. Vishnu is in Vaikuntha. Shiva is in Kailasa and some other place. So we visualize like that one because we are ignorant of God's presence within us, nearby. So we refer to God as Tat, Brahman. 
as opposed to something near either means this world we are familiar with this world our life other people in our life or activities or pain and suffering all familiar to us close to us we call this idam this world but actually brahman is the closest to us so to remind ourselves of the presence of brahman we should say tat om tat the and second thing is kalam anavisandhaya when we whenever you do any action we should not do it with expectation of some benefit for us may it benefit all and everybody in, in that all and everybody i will be also included see if you are doing this class if there are 25 students in a class if the whole class benefits then i also will be benefited because i am part of the class so not for me only exclusively but for all and everybody including animals and plants keeping their well being in mind such action is called yajna that should be done remaining ourselves that om tat dana kriya sa yavisaha kriyate moksha kaanksha bihi by whom moksha kaanksha akaanksha means desire for moksha liberation those who desire liberation from the cycle of birth and death all suffering those people should perform all actions by reminding themselves of the divine presence in all and everything by chanting tat at the beginning of action om tat dana kriya ya vivida all kinds of charity all yajna all tapas all activity must be begun by chanting om tat sat that means that that means supreme reality brahman yajna dana tapa whatever we do then we go to shloka number 26 sat is being explained om tat sat सद्भावे साधुभावे चीत प्रयुज्य प्रशस्ते कर्मण तथा सच्चब्द पार्थ युज्य वर्ड सत् इज यूज टू डिनोट एक्सिस्टेंस एंड रईटियस्ने सत् मीन समथिंग दट आलवेज एक्सिस्ट विदउट चेंज नो बिगिनिंग नो एंड नो चेंज दट इज कॉल सत् असत् मीन समथिंग दट इज देर टेम्पोरली they was they say this world is uh, mitya asat asat means it is there now real but it is not always there it won't be there always and in between it is changing every moment such a entity is called asat sat means something that is always present infinite eternal changeless such entity is only god this what we mean by the viveka means ability to discriminate between sat and asat real and unreal so when we say sat we remain the original of the presence of god sat bhave sad bhave sad bhave means the attitude of uh, being righteous so a person is called a sadhu when is a, a holy person a wicked person is called asadhu we don't want that one sad bhave to indicate righteousness in all our actions dharmic action sad bhave cha sariti etat prayujyate sat has to be mention prashaste karmani in all uh, uh, holy activities prashasta means uh, pure and karmani prashaste karmani vivahadav cha tatha sachabda prarth vivaha means a wedding wedding is considered to be very holy uh, auspicious celebration hmm. so we should say om tat sat at the beginning of wedding or any action in general He is given a wedding as an example to indicate holy activity. Every activity is holy, hmm? except adharmic activities, immoral activities like telling lies and cheating. We should give the up the right beginning at the beginning of spiritual life. Other than that, any activity that we do, maybe local yapara worldly activity, what you call secular activity, like going to office and working there, doing some job. or what we call veda vyapara spiritual activity like japa meditation study scripture study worship etc all of them have to be done remaining ourselves that this work is an offering to the lord he is my humble offering seva my service this is my worship of the lord everything we do should be done as worship so to remind us ourselves of that one we should say om tat sat in the next chapter shloka 46 bhagwan is going to say 1846 bhagwan is going to say 
that whatever action you do should be done as worship, including our own personal activities like breathing, eating, walking, is all worship of God. Shankaracharya has nicely described that one in his famous hymn. Yad yad karma karo mitat tadakhilam shambho tavaradhanam ulart shambho. Whatever karma I do is all your worship. That means every activity we do, every word we speak, must be done as if it is worship of God. Worship means doing any activity with love, with devotion, with dedication, without selfishness, without any evil motive, with pure motive, and without expecting anything in return. This is how worship is done. So every activity must be done as worship. To all these ideas are included in that one phrase, Om Tatsa. That is why when we begin any action, when we end any action, we should say Om Tatsa. Om Tatsa Diti Nirdeshaha Brahmana Trividasmur. Threefold specification of Brahman. Om Tatsa. We have to utter, we have to chant. To remind ourselves that what I am going to do is worship of God. I will do it as worship of God. I see divine presence in all actions. In everything included in all actions. In everybody included in all actions. All these areas are to be remained. We should remain ourselves by chanting Om Tarsat at the beginning and end of all actions. Then uh, yes. 27. Yajne tapasi, tapasida necha stitisaditi chochate karma chaivata darthiyam sadityeva vidhiyate. Here, Continuation. Also, does Sat denote devotion to sacrifice? Yajna tapasi dhanim. To sacrifice. Yajna tapas means austerity we do. Dana charity that we do. All of those things have to be done by chanting Om Tat Sat. Because Sat remains devotion to sac denotes devotion to sacrifice, penance and gift giving. Dana also. The work promoting all these is styled Sat. Anything that we do as Yajna, Dana, Tapas is called Sat because it is going to be offered to the Divine. Sat means Divine, Brahman. So Om Tat Sat. Devotees do it in a different way. Devotees say, whatever work I do is my offering, worship of God. Sri Krishna says again and again in the Gita, whatever you do, offer it to me. Why we should offer all our work to God? Not that he needs. But for us to become unselfish, for us to express our love, devotion to God. So offering has to be done. Then also we should say, Om Tat Sat, I am offering this to you, O Lord, as my humble service. Please accept it. I don't want any personal benefit, fame or glory from this work. Purely as an offering. Then last sloka. Everything has to be done with Shraddha. Repetition of the same idea that came before. Ashraddhaya hutam dattam tapastaptam kritam chayat asadit yuchate partha nachatat pretya no iha ashraddhaya hutam Homa means sacrifice, sacrificial home, ceremony, ritualistic ceremony, Homa. In general, all work has to be done as offering yajna. Ashraddhaya hutam, without faith, without earnestness, without love, anything that is done. Dattam, whatever charity is given without shraddha, without faith and earnestness and love. Taptam, whatever tapas is done without shraddha, without earnestness, love and devotion. Yatkritam, asat idu chate is called asat. Asat means not real, not existence. Not permanent, not unreal. unreal. Asat means real, always present, unchanging, eternal. Asat means opposite of all these things. Temporary does not produce any lasting result. Work done without earnestness, it produces some temporary result and it's not lasting. That should not be done that way. Asadithi uchyate partha na tat pretya no iham. That kind of work does not do anything good either here or in the future life. Pretya means after leaving this body, 
life after leaving the body. Now, ihaya means here while living. Such an activity done without earnestness and love as an offering does not bring any good result either here or in the hereafter. It's of no use. So we should do all work as offering, as worship, as service to remind us ourselves of all those things. We should say, Om Dasar at the beginning and also at the end of all activities. Very important topic. And uh, we close chapter 17 here. Next, uh, next time, we'll quickly review the chapter 17 and 16, 17 and begin last chapter number 18. Now I shall say the closing prayer, then we can have time for questions. Om Sarve Bhavanta Sukhinaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhadrani Pashyantu Makaschi Dukkha Bhag Bhavet Om Shanti 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 Om May all be happy. May all be free from all kinds of suffering, ill health and other kinds of suffering. May all practice and realize what is noble and auspicious. May no one be subject to any kind of suffering in life. Om peace. May there be peace within us all. Adhyatmika Shantihi. May there be peace and harmony amongst all beings. Adi Bhavatika Shantihi. May there be peace everywhere in nature. Adi Daivika Shanti Hari. Om Tat Sat. Sarvam Sri Ramakrishna Arpan. Thank you.